Good morning. We're back today on Sunday to uh, see the recording side of the Gamplexa software. All right, let me take you through it. It's actually pretty easy. Um, the first thing you want to do is pretty obviously set up your live look on stage, and we showed you how to do that a little bit yesterday. Um, so let's take our moving light here and just real quickly we'll we'll move it over to a location using our pan and tilt control which we, I believe we talked about dial up the intensity a little bit choose a color that we like to record we can either do it by a keyboard or by or by the mouse we're gonna do it by the mouse for now I'm gonna come down to the lower right hand corner hit the record button and I get my record command box and let's start We'll just enter in our cue number, which in this case is 41. That's because I already have a lot of cues written. This is a show. Uh, and I'll just come up and click on record. And I've created then, if we can look over here at our record, at our cue form, I see at the bottom I've created Q41 with my moving light. Uh, each fixture I have is in the column, and I'm seeing information about the cue here in each row. Um, we'll come back to this screen in a minute because I want to get to what we're really doing under the covers when we do a record here. For my second cue, I'm going to select my moving light and I'm going to change my color. This time I'll change it to one of my custom colors that I've created earlier. And I'm going to bring up uh, another fixture that has a wheel, sorry, has a scroller associated with it and a wheel. Somebody's been playing with my layout here. Um, and I'm gonna hit the record button and I'm just gonna stop for a minute here and talk. Um, if you'll notice here, some of these fixtures have a red, uh, a red uh, border around them. This tells me that these are the fixtures that will record when I re press the record button. So there's always a question when you record or cue about what is it you're recording. Do you record everything? Uh, well, we let you pick what you want to record so you can split things up if you need to. We also show you what has changed in the queue. In the moving light, our color has changed. In our other fixture, the level, we change the level, we change the color, and we change the wheel. Um, so those are the two fixtures that I'm going to save. And, and I could choose to save, I could control click on those. Can you hold the mic a second? Sure. I need two hands here. I could control click uh, on, on just the uh, uh, just the wheel if that's all I wanted to save. In this case, we're gonna save both of them. If I look over on my right-hand side of my record, I can also choose what attributes I want to control. So I can ch choose to control my level, my pan tilt, my color, my wheel, my beam, shape, and times for all of those. So I've got a lot, a lot of flexibility um, about what I wanna save in each queue. Now, by default, when we come up, we we put in red everything which has changed since the last time we recorded a cue. So we're trying to do what you want to do. So we're going to just record this as Q42. I believe that's my next number. And I can see those changes show up here on the screen. Um, and we'll, again, come back to this a little more later. For my third cue, because I want to show you how dark moves work, I'm going to take the moving light out. And you notice uh, we get a little error here that tells me where the moving light is pointed. This will become important in a minute. And I'm going to add a couple of other fixtures to the rig. And this time I'm going to do a record with the keyboard because it's a little faster. I'm just going to say Control R for record, Q43, type 43, and press Enter. So it's a faster way to record a cue. Now, let's come, uh, well, let me do one more, just a moment. Um, for the next one, let's do, uh, let's just bring up our moving light in a different position. We also, in this, have the idea of a preset focus where I can set up a look ahead of time and then just make the light go to that look. You'll notice on the screen that the arrow has changed here. The uh, color changed as it went to its new position. 
hot. Uh, it, the, 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 the unit is now lighting our sign and it looks very nice. Um, and we'll record this as Q44. Again, I'll use the keyboard because it's a little quicker and easier. Now, coming back to our screen over here, we'll go to our first queue real quick. We'll go to that queue. We can see things changing. Um, for my next queue, I have a go button that I can use to go to the next queue. And I want to want you to see what's happening here with this fixture. I'm now going to take it to dark. And if I wait a moment, you'll see the pan tilt starting to move as the fixture repositions itself to be ready to come up in Q44. This is a dark move, a move in dark. Uh, some people use mark cues for this. And in our system, we can see what's happening here. We can modify this uh, with our Q fixture. I can right click on. Uh, I can right click on my uh, my dark move, and if I want it to delay a little while, I could increase my delay for that move or make it move slower. So if you have a scene where there's a very dramatic moment when the lights go out uh, and you want to wait for the dark move, you could do that. You can also easily move this anywhere you want it in the Q stack uh, so you can see what's happening. Other interesting things happening here, you see that some of these have a red background. This says it's a blocking queue. We are a pure tracking console. So when it's blocked like this, it says that we have written these values in hard and they won't change, uh, or things won't track through them, rather. Uh, you notice that the first queue in this sequence is in red. That shows it's blocking. Uh, that's because we come up from zero. When we go to zero up to a level, we block everything because that's usually what you want to do. You can turn that off if you want to by mousing over and selecting both of these, right clicking on the block button and make them an unblock for example. Now these are no longer blocking queues. If you want to split queues and move them around, let's split queue 43 into two queues. I can click on those, go to my queue and go to 43.5. And I can renumber those, and I've created my new Q43.5. So that's kind of fun. If I want to change times for a queue, uh, or it, well, I can, if I want to change the level on the queue, let's say in blind in Q42, I decide I want my intensity to be greater. I can right click on my intensity and change it to, let's say, full record that. So this is the way I do blind recording. The other interesting feature is time. I can either change time for a single fixture by clicking on it and setting a time, or if I want to, I can collect, select, um, I can select all the fixtures or um, sorry, I can select up moves, down moves, or all fixtures, and I can set the time for all those at once. So we have a lot of flexibility with our tracking system uh, in terms of writing cues, in terms of modifying the blind, in terms of understanding what's going on.